parts of me that we have seen that are cool explaining us more about this safe for that and pass the price. Yes, my dear friend of the Yeah. Yay! Yeah. Oh yes. My yeah, that's really tiny. Sort of old for whom I work. Paid for pizza. pizza and bold made for the room. Yeah. Yay. Okay, so uh, this is all based on a paper about functional unparsing, I think, by Lee Danby. Uh, and some uh, uh, and the other place you should look is based on bookmage.org. Um, uh, this is Oleg Kisadios. He has a lot of interesting things about uh, everything. Everything, really. Yeah. Uh, but mostly programming stuff. <laughs> uh, and mostly yeah, yeah. ML variants. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's an ML variant which you will never see. Okay. Uh, first of all, let me just gonna check. How many of you have seen this program before? Two <laughs> hands. One, two, three, four. Okay, not, not bad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this is, uh, yeah, the famous printing in energy first example of C. Uh, all I care about is the printf here, so I'm just going to add a bunch of my lines to hide everything else. Uh, very good. Uh, right, so, okay, so if you know about this, then uh, you don't need me to tell you that you can also interpolate uh, uh, things like, uh, oh, hey, what's this? Rob, Rob hacked your presentation. Yeah, Rob. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, there are two lights, you can uh, make the uh, program interpolate integers, you can get sentences if you want, same percent D for decimal, you can get it to put in strings if you want, strings like the number four, because there are four lights, as we all know, there are four lights. Uh, so the type safety issue comes when you screw this up and you ask, you say D, which says you will find an argument which is an integer, and then you actually give it for something else, like a string. And so if you do this, uh, well, it'll compile. And then we run it to roll this. <laughs> Some strange number. Unexpected. Run it again. <laughs> oh, and don't have a new name. No, oh, it's the same. So it's like they don't have adverse page memorization. <laughs> <laughs> it's because uh, it's a constant. <laughs> well, because it's a small literal? Yeah. Yeah, so, so it's, it's, always, it's always in the same. It's yeah, in the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's unfortunate. So I guess I could, uh, blah, blah, blah. I mean, Do the other one. Two percent, ask them to give it four. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's my next example. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, so this is, uh, this is a dangerous. Do not try this at home. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, okay. Oh, okay. The most boring possible at home. Yeah. <laughs> I expect the first when I was preparing this to discover that uh, I actually get these lines out. So I guess, should I always line over by default or something? Is that what's happening here? Yes. Okay, so I expect that I might have to run to sit there or something to get the open up. But anyway, so uh, just to summarize, the issue is, uh, in my pointer, the issue is that uh, all right, you ask for an integer here and then it looks for an integer and if it finds a string it just says, well, I'm going to treat it like an integer because it's C and C doesn't know any better. And that's a pointer, so it is kind of an integer and then it does a random number. Well, not random, but a little different this time because I've changed the program. Uh, whereas if you have to do more, so you can say I could give you a, a pointer to characters, it was a string, and then you give it a number, then it tries to interpret that as a pointer to memory, and it goes to some random place in memory. Not random. Four. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Terministic place in memory, which uh, uh, which it is not allowed to do, or it has an out. Wait, instead of four, you should put four, one, nine, five, nine, nine, two. <laughs> 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 Okay, so I guess I, guess I can't do it on the next line. Okay. The note may have changed. Yeah. 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 Woo! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it works as described. <laughs> so, uh, this is not good. Don't be like this. <laughs> I like this a lot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Type safety. We want to know if it is an integer and then complain at compile time. Uh, I should mention that I'm cheating here a little bit. Let me grab this chair. Remember what that's supposed to say. All right, so we uh, wanted to tell us at compile time. Now, if you were uh, paying very close attention to the output of, of this make, but uh, just write this again. Make 
you'll notice there's no, that W no format. Uh, I'm kind of cheating here in terms of this is the option to turn off the warning to notice the type problems in this program. So if I run it, as I just did, uh, expand this. Okay, so if I run GCC without that warning or without that setting, GCC knows. It says, hey, I expect an integer of type int, but you gave me a, type, a thing of type char pointer at the reverse on the next one. GCC does in fact have this built in, it'll detect the type problem and at least warn you about it. And that's very nice. Now, this is actually a lot of C compilers have this. Uh, Plan 9 had it, I remember reading once. Uh, I'm sure others have it. Plan 9 might have been the first, I'm not. Uh, anybody remember? No, Plan 9 was the first C compiler. No, okay. Uh, so, so that's nice. The problem, and the only thing about this, is that you have modified the compiler to introduce this feature. So if I am programming away and I decide I would really like to write my own mini language for some purpose, right, with percent signs in it or something, uh, using and I'll have a different function which will interpret this mini language and do something fancy, right, and interpret variable arguments, uh, the compiler will not know anything about it, then we'll I'll still get all this type on safety. And so this is uh, it's a solution to the problem that you can get the compiler to warn you about this, but it's not a very satisfying solution. The modified compiler is so outside the realm of kind of classical normal C. So, uh, even though I have to cheat a little bit, we, uh, I still feel like I'm morally in the right, so we'll proceed. Uh, okay, so uh, let me show you the uh, Haskell version. Uh, as before, uh, I don't care about most of this stuff, I don't care about this, so I'm going to just add some empty lines here, put the at the top, and we'll have, okay, now we'll start with. <coughs> so, the, uh, for those of you who don't know Haskell, uh, who does know Haskell? Okay. Uh, you guys will be a little bit bored, sorry. Uh, so, dash dash is a comment. I just put in these comments with the uh, analogous uh, statements from the C program for comparison. Uh, this is a function that I will, definition I will show you later, although it's not very interesting, but so is this. Uh, this is just the analogous things in this fancy thing that will do it. Playing Haskell. So you want to print out just a whole world of string, you have to say lit for literal string in the system, and then it will have a, you can put the string there, and that's what it will do is print that string. If you want to say percent D and just insert an integer number of lights, uh, this is really cumbersome. So I'm using the golf club that I found here. <laughs> uh, then you, you did the same thing with the literal part here, and there are, and up there, and then the lights is another literal part here, and then really you say, yes, I want an int. And then the four at the end, uh, and it will do the same thing as I'll show you in a second. So if someone like on a string and you're going to interpolate a string, you say stir, like a stir in the middle there. And then you can put a, a four here with a double quote on the next line, wrap right around, and everything. So <laughs> laser pointer on the table there, too. Works. Kind of getting up. Laser pointer? Yeah. <laughs> I hate laser pointer. Don't look at it. I do. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's try uh, hello two, which is from this scale. There are the world, there are four lights, there are four lights. And it's over. Okay, that's the end. Uh, okay, so that's nice. Let's keep going down here and look at some of these more. Here's uh, one of the broken ones that we had, uh, which I had to comment out. I had to comment out the Haskell ones as well. Yeah, this is old stuff. Yeah. Uh, so, so this is the version where what? We ask for an integer by saying present D, but then we give it a string. So similarly, I say int here. And then I go to the string over here. So let's say I've done the event. And uh, what amazing thing happens? I cannot guess. Whoa! Error. Error. Error number the first one. Error. Okay, so this. So much. Yeah. Text so much. Talk so many errors. <laughs> okay, well, I will. Uh, hmm. Oh, I'll show you this whole error message. Maybe if I shrink my. Really, really want to talk. Okay. That's kind of weird. Is this tolerable? Yeah. Like real? Right. Pretty much expect to type in with actual type uh, list of char, which is the type of uh, strings in uh, Haskell, uh, which is exactly what we want to do. It says the second argument of this thing before this thing, it says the actual type is char uh, list, and it's supposed to be an int, and that's exactly what we wanted to say. Okay, we're off. So, I take it G, apparently. Let's show you the uh, next one also. The next one, unfortunately, is a little bit less uh, transparent. It's coming out of this bad one again, so we don't get distracted by it. This one that we've looked at, coming at the end. This one is, uh, is a longer 
first error where we ask for a string, or tell us to expect a string, and then we give it an integer. It says something a little bit uh, more cryptic. No instance for no string arises from the literal for. Uh, it's essentially the same error, actually, but uh, if you don't know how to spell it, it's opaque. Uh, there's something funny happening in Haskell here about the way that uh, numeric literals are handled. So numeric literals don't have, uh, their type is very generic in Haskell. So when you write four here, it will say, okay, well, this is some kind of number type. And then it's going to figure out later from the context how you use that value to figure out which number type it is, whether it's an integer or a float or a level or, or uh, some user defined type or whatever. Um, and so at this point, what it's saying is, well, I figured out that it's supposed to be a num, uh, but then I was, uh, well, sorry, this is a num because it's a, a numeric literal, but you told me to expect a string, and I don't know how to interpret strings as numbers. So, do something about it. That's the cloud that usually says. Okay, awesome. Type safety achieved. Okay, now what, uh, what should we do next? Yeah, let's uh, just to verify. Let's see, let me comment this back out. Let's come in here and have a look. Maybe we'll up a little bit to the uh, previous versions. Uh, in an interactive session, uh, what do you just look for? Hey, uh, load me. Oh, because I didn't comment on the, uh, this is the problem of coding, you know, we have to do things. Did you just forget to save? Yeah, what did I forget to say? I made it, uh, I don't want to be able save. Then you can 
make a thing with just going to string. And the way you do that is you can ask the empty function in here. <laughs> and then you do the <laughs> Inserted in the tensor. 
unparsing the sensible people called formatting. It's formatting functions. They format the thing. You get some data, and it assembles a string, and then you can put that in the code. Great. Uh, you also, uh, in C, have the reverse function, which is scanf. Where you give it a thing with percent Ds in it or not, and it tries to interpret the uh, given string or a given input from study or whatever. Uh, with some additional cleverness, which will let you love that, as I was going to say, you can use this exact same expression for that function too. That just changes the types. The types are not the same anymore, they're more complicated, it's interesting here, uh, but you can do it. So you can have uh, the very same uh, representation being used for the two totally different functions exactly as you have in, in C. You print F and scan F and you can do this It takes more work, it's really much, much more work, but it's, uh, it's cool. And you use the type classes, which everybody likes. Uh, let me give you just as a yeah. Okay. Let me give you a uh, example. Where I put this one here? Oh no! I didn't save this file. The very wrong file. Uh, it, okay. So just as an example of something you can do with the same ideas. Uh, these ideas also work for shrimp biscuits so and made it for things like web routing, where you have uh, again the same pair of uh, columns. Where you want to be able to generate syntactic correct pearls, right, which have variable parts in them, like ID, or customer IDs in there, or some string or int, whatever. And you also want to be able to interpret them when they come back when you get requested. So here I have a, uh, this is a stupid project I'm working on, which I'm uh, doing thing with a right now, uh, which has a similar language in it okay, for defining uh, pearls, pearl syntaxes. Okay? So this A is a combinator like the int or stir. Except it looks for like three URL slugs with four digits in the first one, two in the next, and four, two in the next. Uh, this is a little combinator that says make sure there's a slash at the end. And so the machine already receives a request that's the same, except it doesn't have a slash, it'll redirect you to one with a slash. That's here. Similarly, here, you have a and slash, and there's a literal, which is new, it's a different point that that has a day, and then some string, which is the, the title of some widget in that day, and then an int for this big writing of things that have the same title. Uh, and then you have a move endpoint associated with those. Okay, so these objects, uh, these types are like funny, they're kind of complex. Uh, these represent endpoints in this little web app. Uh, and again, they can be used for both generating links and for, uh, let's look, uh, there's one up here somewhere. Oh, yeah. oh that's a good, that's a terrible example. Oh, well, that's a terrible example. Okay, so, so this is a, uh, this is a routing table in this web app. So if you find this endpoint uh, and, and it's a get, then what you should do is respond with a permanent redirect to this link. This, this uh, in Pascal, this is like a lambda. This introduces an anonymous function whose arguments are being index. Okay, so the types of these are not stated here. They are inferred from the endpoint in the same way that uh, the types of those uh, formatting instructions were inferred in, in Daniel's paper. Okay, so the types of these are inferred. And then we generate a new endpoint that says we should stick a one on the end different endpoint the link for it. Okay, this is exactly like format, except with links. Similarly, on the, on the inbound side, when we receive the URL, uh, uh, we can route it. So if you get a uh, payment endpoint, it's the same as here as a request, then run this function with the three arguments that you found, that you extracted from the URL. It just lets scan. It works. It works. Fine. Yeah. This application sucks. This is what it's uh, But it works. Yeah. Uh, the only thing that I haven't figured out yet that I would like to do is have uh, a similar setup for forms in, in HTML. I'd like to be able to write a form so that the type of the request that it will make is deduced just from looking at the form. I know all the information is there. Right? It has all the input elements and everything. And similarly, it's like matches to the, the type of the endpoint handler. And so I will know that my form will generate requests that my uh, I don't have that working, that's more ambitious than I am. <laughs> 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 yes? Um, you better see that here. So what happens when the type assumptions are violated at one time? So I see something's being checked at file time, but hmm. what happens if there is a, you know, at one time on your route exact, and 
it to the point if you get a uh, something yes. you don't expect. Uh, uh, right, so if someone submits to me, request an error, which is not in the right form, yeah. yeah. Uh, something like, like uh, oh, yeah. Uh, uh, short answer is that function will not be called. Okay. Um, indeed, it cannot be called because it doesn't have the objects of the right type. Uh, so some kind of error thing will happen in route, uh, in route, whatever. I think parse will fail, basically. Yeah, parse will fail, for sure. Uh, the only thing that is uh, exact. Well, this is not a good example. Uh, route, yeah, so this, uh, route exact is a little in terms of route, and route returns a maybe. Okay, so it's going to take the, uh, take the route that you're going to do, and then uh, it does that, and then, uh, yeah, possibly you succeed. And you actually get the result out of the uh, if the request is suitable for this endpoint, then you will get a thing. Otherwise, you will get uh, not a thing. <laughs> Specifically, you will get nothing. Specifically, you will get nothing. Specifically, you will get nothing. That's his type of term. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the yeah, short answer is uh, when you're writing, when I'm writing the machinery, I have to worry about that. But the, what the compiler will check for me is that it will be impossible for me to call the user's function, the handling function, unless I have properly dealt with that. I can properly unmarshal three values of the right types. And then I can call that function. And so if I'm unable to produce those values because the values are not there in the, in the string that the user sent me, or that the, the attacker I guess sent me, uh, then I will not, then there will be no code path which leads to executing that function with the wrong types of them. Because the compiler checked. Which is the great glory of static type. Strongly static type. Pardon me, strongly static type. Type systems. Um, yeah, that's under the compiler is proving the compile time checks are sufficient to prove that statement. That this function cannot be called with the wrong, the wrong types of objects, barring like, uh, so assuming all the hard tests are hardware are provided. And, 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 yeah, obviously, my sense of the reliability of these things is greatly decreased tonight. Or you can drill holes in your chip. Or you can not drill zap holes, right? With a focus gap. Okay. Uh, yeah. Does that answer the question? I think so. Thank you. I do. Okay. So everybody should use LCL. <laughs> or ML. Or ML. ML has the same type system uh, almost, which allows you to do uh, at least the basic version of this with a different definition. No, I guess they don't have type classes. They do, but I mean, they have record, they have first class modules, so you can always pick them. <coughs> okay. Okay, so maybe you can get, get away with it in the end too. So use that now. How about, use now? How about F sharp? I don't know anything about F sharp. Um, I am given to understand it has a nice type system along the same lines, so you can do the same thing, but I have no experience with it. The real problem is that then you end up running on a .NET framework, so then you're just saying. Yeah. <laughs> so you won't be on that, but you won't be type safe. Type safe and on that. <laughs>